Hi, this is Shannon. Thanks so much for joining us. Today we're going to show you a little bit more about how to do the Math Might Showdown subtraction strategy game. In this example, I'm going to show you a two digit by two digit subtraction, mostly with regrouping. We're going to use all four characters for our subtraction Math Mites, like Springling, Mini, and Subby. We'll use DC as well as talk about how to use T-Pops. This is much more of an instructional video to show how to use the different strategies, but the Math Might Showdown game portion could be used inside of a Math with Someone group. We're gonna start off with rolling the die, and we're gonna have one person be blue and one person be red. When we decide which problem we want to, after we roll the die and we get the character selected, the child can decide which problem they wanna use that might lend themselves to the strategy. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll and pretend that Springling came up. I'm gonna be blue and decide which one of these problems might lend itself to Springling's strategy. Because I have Springling with the pen Pencil toppers, I'm going to pull out my Springling pencil that I'll use to kind of solve the problem. I'm going to start off looking as where I could go kind of with Springling with 42 minus 17. I'm going to use a marker today so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and write my strategy. Uh, my problem first, 42 minus 17. Springling uses a strategy called counting up or counting back. She was born with very flat, uh, fancy eyelashes and very fluffy fur. She was born with a coily tail because she likes to hop and keep track of how far she's hopping. So she really loves it when students make a number line or what we call an open number line to look at the distance between the two numbers. In younger grades, subtraction is looked at as takeaway, but as students get older, it's really just the distance between two numbers. This will help them as they move on to decimals or other higher concepts in fractions or even eventually in middle school with integers. Springling hates it when students count 11111 because it flattens her fur. So sometimes students aren't sure how Springling wants to hop. She likes to hop on friendly numbers. So one of the things that we use is our number line that I love from Boxcars and One-Eyed Jacks. The reason why I like this number line is because all of the decades are circled. So if Springling was on the 17, where would she hop to to the next friendly number? Kids can kind of see right away that if she hopped to the 20 and we say hop, Springling hop, we're gonna keep track that she hopped three. So in between 17 and 20 is three. Some students might have to hop to the 30 and then the 40. We're gonna pretend that we know how to kind of hop further and we're gonna go from the 20 all the way to 40 because Springling can hop a really long way. And so getting kids in the idea of the character and how excited she is about being able to make this far hop because it's worth 20 kind of makes Springling's fur kind of fluff. Once we go from the 40 to the 42, we know we went two. Springling's strategy really looks at the distance between the two numbers. So we're gonna add our 20 plus our three plus our two. And I would show in this game that I have the answer 25. So the distance between 17 and 42 is 25 total. I'm gonna keep my counter on here. I could certainly check with my partner and see if they agree if I am correct. If you want to, you can challenge an answer. If a student thinks that the answer is incorrect, they could challenge and try to solve it a different way. The Math Might Download Showdown also has the answer key to it so students can kind of check if they're playing this at an independent station. You also could do a Math Might Showdown with the characters by rolling the die and doing it with um, your class. What we're gonna look at next is our next strategy. Our next strategy, we're gonna roll the die and kind of think of how we can use our characters Mini and Subby. Mini and Subby stand for what numbers are known for in subtraction as their proper name. The first number in subtraction is known as the minuend, and the second number is known as the subtrahend. That's how they got their name. Minuend is the girl who wears 
a hat and kind of likes to get rough and tough and have fun in the dirt. Her sister, Minnie, which stands for Minuend, does not like to get dirty and gets really upset if their tail is dragging. The strategy that they use is known as compensation. So I'm going to look for a problem that I think would lead itself best to compensation. A lot of students when they're doing compensation like to learn this first when going across zeros because they can prevent regroups. Minnie and Subby are twins that were born with an adjoining tail and their parents said they can go through Mathville as long as their tail stays a tails with a part. So on our pencil topper, we kind of have their coily tail joined in together. And so I'm gonna select a problem that I think would lend itself the best to using Minnie and Subby. And so if I wanna look at a problem and try to figure out maybe how I can prevent a regroup, I'm gonna look at 77 minus 18. I'm gonna pull out my Minnie and Subby marker so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to write the problem 77 minus 18. Minnie and Subby aren't happy because there's a regroup in the problem. And if you look at the initial distance that was in the problem, it was asking you to look at the distance between 18 and 77. So they wanna know what's the distance between there. They oftentimes don't like to regroup so sometimes they might change the number to kind of adjust how they're thinking of it. You could also look at this stacked. We know that there's going to be a regroup if we end up having to take seven minus eight, that's gonna require us to do a regroup. So she might decide to move up the number line and be able to go maybe up to, the, to 79. And so what I want to show you is kind of the idea of using a string with kids, that kids are trying to prevent a regroup, that the distance here between the two numbers is really what's in between my fingers. They're going to change the distance and they're going to move. And so if Minnie decides to extend this out and go to 79, in actuality, she's added two. Because their tail is joined, we have to be able to move the subtrahend as well. So if I were to move the forward, even if I wanted to go to 78, I could do that. We're trying to prevent the regroup. If she's trying to tug, she's tugging on her sister's tail to move the same distance. So if her sister moves to up the number line, so does her sister. So she has to move up to the number 20. This is now the same distance, right? We've just shifted the number line and we've changed this problem to 79 minus 20. This problem involves regroup. I shifted the minuend two and the subtrahend by two, and I was able to do it in the same direction for the tail to move. A lot of students get confused with abracus because we give one, get one, because in this way, I added two and I added two. In subtraction, we are shifting the number line, meaning we're moving the number line over and that same distance is equal. Again, a lot of students like to learn this strategy when it's across the zeros because they can shift 100 back to 99 and realize they don't have to regroup. Once a student goes ahead and subtracts, they know the distance now is 59. There's no regrouping necessary because we shifted it to friendly numbers of which we didn't need to regroup. Now we're gonna go ahead and show how to use another strategy using another one of our friends, um, which is DC. DC stands for decomposing and composing. Um, you know, and students might also look at these different problems and we have our car and our airplane jet that is on our website that's actually in the MathMite showdown. Um, you know, some students might disagree that this is the most efficient way to use Mini and Subby. Some students might think that DC is the most efficient or they might think that Springling is the most efficient. So you can use our jet plane to kind of talk about faster ways of getting there or you can talk about our putsy car that's kind of putzing through the winding roads of Mathville, and eventually we'll get there, but it might not be the most efficient. As we start looking at DC, we're gonna look at decomposing and composing. It's really important to think of DC similar to the traditional. He doesn't like to regroup, but he likes to smash numbers and decompose them so that there is not a regroup necessary. So I'm going to take a blue counter 
and I'm gonna find a problem that I want to decompose to show it kind of in a different way. So I'm gonna show 62 minus 33. I'm gonna grab my marker for DC and write down my problem, 62 minus 33. Students oftentimes look at this and might wanna use the strategy of partial differences, which is similar to partial sums because you decompose by place value. If I decompose by place value in this problem, 60 minus 30 is gonna go great, but when I do two minus three, I'm gonna get a negative number. And so we wanna think about what DC is doing. He's taking the number and he's smashing it and he's renaming the 62. So as we look at an abacus, which is cleared to the right with kind of white right, we have kind of an abacus here. We can think about renaming the number 62. So I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then a 60. And now I'm going to show two. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, two. If I looked here at this 62, I could say that it's six tens and two ones. What's another way that we could rename this number? One way we could rename it is five tens and 12 ones. When we get kids to understand how to decompose the numbers, it really matches what they're doing in the traditional method. So for example, if I had off to the side 62 minus 33 to kind of show you the comparison, when kids are regrouping, they aren't going next door and borrowing one. They're actually regrouping and they're making this new name. So 62 was six tens and two ones. Now it's five tens and it's 12 ones. This is a very nice connection for kids using number sense to show how they're solving the problem. So if I have 50 minus 30, I know that that is 20. If I have 12 minus three, I know that that is nine. So the total that I'm left over with is 29. So a lot of what you have to do with kids, especially in second grade, is them to see whether or not they have to regroup or not regroup. If you don't have to regroup with subtraction, DC works out great because you can just decompose it by place value and solve it with partial differences. It's when there's a regroup involved that students need to know what they're doing in the traditional is the same as what they're doing with DC. So as I'm renaming the 62, it's 50 and 12, which is exactly what I did here. I'm just using the value. DC is very valuable for second and third grade to learn before we would move to the understanding of T-Pops. I'm gonna go ahead and put a red counter on the problem that I'm gonna use, which is um, going to be the traditional method, which we're gonna subtract um, 43 minus 26. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my T-Pops out for this example. Again, if you're playing with students and they know these strategies, this is kind of a tutorial to use for your students or yourself, they can go ahead and show how to, how to play this game you know, with a student and kind of a friend and kind of show on their accountability sheet how they're doing it. I'm gonna show this problem 43 minus 26 traditionally. When we show subtraction, we have the minuen and the subtrahen. We really like, while we're building these problems, to be able to use the T-Pops place value map. The T-Pops place value map comes in handy because we can build the minuen, which is the first number in subtraction, with the disks. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my place value map. You can find these on our website. I'm gonna build our first number, which was 43. And then with the subtrahend, I'm gonna build it with the strips. The reason why I'm building this with the strips is so that students can see what is actually being taken away and what's actually happening in the regrouping process. So in this case, I'm gonna decompose the numbers by 20 and six. I'm gonna to count to see if I can get six on top of my, uh, if I can take away six from the three. I've realized that I can't do that. So what we really want is kids to keep that three on the six. This is sort of demonstrated also in our Math Mites poster because if the kids leave the three on and they go to regroup, they will actually only fill in seven. So you wanna keep the number down below so they realize they don't have enough. So this goes back to that renaming process. We had four tens 
and we had three ones. I'm gonna rename this by taking the 10. I'm not going next door and borrowing, so I'm really not going to give this 10 back. If I borrowed something from you, don't you want it back? So try to refrain from saying the term borrowing because you're not borrowing, you're renaming or regrouping. I'm going to rename 43 and I'm gonna take my 10 and rename it for 10 ones. As I fill in my 10 ones, what is the new name for our problem? We are not looking at 43 minus 26, we're now looking at 30 and 12, which this also connects to what we were doing. So if I went here and kind of changed on the problem, we changed this whole value. The value of the number is the same, but we rechanged the name of it. We made it three tens and we made it 13 ones. So as kids start to subtract, they already had the three, they had to pull away six, so it's three, four, five, six. So now they're left over with seven. The 13 ones minus the six ones gives me seven ones. A lot of times kids say three minus two. The more we don't make kids attend to place value, the less they'll do it and the less they'll make sense of it. So it's not three minus two, it's 30 minus 20. So I'm gonna take the 20 and I'm gonna take the 20 off. So I have to take 20 away from 30, 10, 20. When I take away the 20, I'm left with 110. So again, here you see 30 minus the 20 gives me just the 110 and they're left over with it. Kids can also show this you know, in a quick draw as well, um, showing their place value disks in the same fashion that I was showing it concretely and so they would build you know that first number they would show the process you know of what's happening where they're bringing one over you know a 10 and they're kind of renaming it and they end up you know with 13 and then you can go ahead and subtract the way we were doing it where we subtract the six one two three five six and kids are going to see here that's left over is seven we take away the other 20 we're left over with the 10. this is the pictorial way so a lot of what we do with this is cpa we want to show it through concrete pictorial abstract although this is more of a tutorial video kind of showing you the idea it's also part of the way that we could show the math might show down if i was playing this in a non-competitive version students would just show their different ways of solving you would roll the die, select the one that you're doing. If you wanted to do the competitive version, kids could be forced to use a strategy that they might not want to use, but are showing their kind of their, they're flexing their muscles to kind of show you how well they know how to solve the problems. But you could make it more competitive where you could try to get four in a row vertically, horizontally, or diagonally to see who would win. Check out our website for the earlier video for this that we would do with first grade. We also have this with decimals. And then when you get the download, the nice part is it comes with a sheet that you can create your own. So we have it with three by two numbers. You can create your own where you have a PDF fill in and you can create the game board with your own students depending on what questions or what areas they're needing help with. Thanks so much for joining us. Our website is sis4teachers.org.